last week you opened up your whole position room for competition and uh, you ended up basically where you started. Um, I don't know if that was partially due to some of the guys that were out or whatever. I'll ask you to elaborate on that. But can you give us some insight into that competition last week? And and obviously you got rewarded with a huge game from Mike Harley. Um, just, you know, give us some insight into what's going on in your position group and if any of the young guys are close to busting out. Yeah, sure. Um, no, the guys that started in the game were the ones that earned it. Had nothing to do with anything else but that. Um, it's the way it worked out. We opened it up. I told them early on in the week, whoever uh, practiced the the best, um, they've always been practicing hard. Um, but whoever produced, um, who paid attention to details, um, who competed for the ball the most, who gave us the best chance to win, and, and you know, in my opinion, and then obviously our offensive coordinator always has the last, and, and Coach Diaz has the, has the last call. Uh, but I think they, you know, trust my opinion. Um, but, uh, no, those were the guys that earned it. Uh, they practiced really well. Assignments, you know, um, doing everything right, all of that has to do with it. And, uh, you know, I think that um, I think that's good for everybody. You know, I think that you can uh, – I, I noticed that we were kind of getting in a lull, not being comfortable. I know that's easy to throw out there, but – it was just more of a lull. Like, it wasn't like guys weren't practicing hard. I would never allow that to happen. I know I read some stuff on social media. That's kind of, no, that did not happen. Uh, we've been busting our butt since, you know, since the spring. And um, guys just weren't producing in games. And I said, guys, it's it's a production business. I'm sorry. That's the way life is. Um, I know all you guys want to go play in the NFL, but uh, you'll get a rude awakening when you get there. It's a production business. And, and, and you know, you got to go out there and produce and, and we're going to see, just give somebody else a chance to see if, if they can do it. And, but through the whole week, those three guys actually, uh, and Jeremiah is in that mix too, Jeremiah Payton, um, that, you know, they were the ones that did the best that week. Uh, as a follow, D, D Wiggins, uh, got, if the, if, if the counts are accurate, he got the most reps in the game. And he's a guy that's really been struggling the whole season to get on track. Uh, but the fact that you played him so much, I assume is an indicator that on the practice field, he's doing very, very well. Talk a little bit about him specifically, uh, just what he's been going through this year, just trying to get going. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a process at receiver. Um, you know, we were laughing um, watching all of the cutups. We watched every uh, clip. Um, that we played this year. And it's just funny how some guys jog out into the game and then the, the ball finds them. It's not like we meant to throw it to that guy. It just that coverage dictated that that guy was open on that play. And, you know, sometimes there's some luck involved with that. Um, but no, D, D had been struggling coming down with some contested catches. Uh, he knew that, challenged him with that. I challenged the whole room with that. And I said, look, man, we, I don't know if we've made a contested catch all year. That's not acceptable. We're not going to do that. We got to attack the ball when it's in the air. Um, and then, but I've been watching D and he runs to me overall consistently. He's, he has been running the best routes, the most consistent routes out of everybody um, up to this point. And it's just a process. Like I said, man, I've, one thing about getting older is you've been through a lot of stuff. I've been through this so many times with wide receivers. It's a process and you just got to let it play out and you got to fight. And you got to drive through the hard times sometimes, man. Not everything comes easy. I know the fans, everybody else, everybody. that We live in a microwave society. Everybody wants everything right now. Life does not work that way, um, you know. And so neither does becoming a great wide receiver. And like I said, I've had two walk-ons get drafted before. And they, you know, they didn't come out there that first week and be draftable players. They had to work on it for three years. And so it's a process. And D has been working his tail off. And then when I watch the routes in the game, I don't even look to see if the ball comes to you or not. I just watch that individual route. Was it a championship route where if we threw you the ball, would you have been open? And that's how I grade all of the guys. And D's been doing really well in that area. Coach, we've got David Lake from inside the U. David? Hey, David. Yeah, Coach, wanted to, you touched on it a little bit, but wanted to dig more into the uh, contested catches thing. Um, just your general thoughts on that area of playing receiver, you know, is it something that you feel like can be taught, can be developed, or is it an innate thing that a receiver kind of has or doesn't have? 
And then maybe who would you say is kind of the best that you've seen in practices at uh, winning those 50-50 balls? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, there were some guys, like I had one guy who could just, when he jumped up in the air, he had the ability to just place his body in between the ball and defender. He just had that natural ability. I think it's somewhat of a mindset. You know, you hear the expression, man, he's a dog, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but there is a mindset. You know, when you, you walk across that white stripe, you could be the nicest guy in the world. But, man, when you walk across that white stripe, you better turn your hat on backwards, your hard hat on, man. And that is your football when it's in the air. And, you know, I'd rather die than let that ball hit the ground or me not catch it. And I just think that it's it's a mindset. I think you can develop that mindset. I really do. Um, and, you just, and we talk about all the time, our, 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 my, our, our call for the wide receivers is DBS. Don't be soft. We talk about that a thousand billion times a day. Don't be soft. Ball's in the air. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. And uh, so, and I just think that's a, just a process, man. The guys that probably do the best that I've seen, you know, I think, um, wow, I, I don't think we've been great at it in practice, you know, and that, that's filtered into the games. Um, the last two weeks, uh, I think we've made some plays out at practice. And you could tell, you could tell that a day like Saturday was coming because of the last two practices and the way they approach practice and they were making plays and, and, um, and, and then it just filtered, it filtered in the game. So I really, quite honestly, I would love to be able to point somebody out, but I, I can't do that right now. I'll let you know when I see one. Coach, we've got David Ferronis from the Sun Sentinel. David? Hey, Coach. Uh, one thing uh, Manny Diaz mentioned is out of the freshman receivers, maybe the skill set that is uh, flashing the most uh, is uh, – is Keyshawn Smith's speed. I want to know uh, what you've seen uh, from, from him in, in that regard in practice. Is there any measurable that you have for us, like a 40 or like fastest speed he has hit in practice? And um, just could it lead to uh, potentially more playing time? But we've seen a little bit of it from him, but more playing time in the second half of the season. Yes. Uh, I think um, he's one of our faster guys. That's, I think everybody knows that, you know, um, Really, you know, if you want to know who the fastest uh, DB is, always ask a receiver. If you want to know who the fastest receiver is, always ask a DB. They'll, they'll let you know because uh, 40 times can be deceiving sometimes. Um, but Keyshawn can run and he can get behind people. Uh, and I, I see an extremely bright future in him. Um, he is a freshman that uh, – and this happens to a lot of freshmen and – He's just got to learn to process all the information, and he's doing a, a better job of that. Um, and so, he he once he become once he becomes um, where just assignment sound to where it is extremely tight um, in his assignment sound, then then you, you're going to see him take off as a player. But all he's doing is going through a natural freshman progression. Like it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with anything. Like I said man, it's a process, or you just see nothing but freshmen starting all over the country. You might see here and there, but, I mean, there's there's things that you learn by playing in football games. Like, that's why D. Wiggins, Mark Pope, Mike Harley especially, man, he, you know, he probably learned some things two years ago that is helping him in games today. Great. Coach, we got Chris Stock from Inside the U. Chris? Chris? Hey, Coach. Uh Wanted to veer off. I know there's a lot of discussion with the wide receivers, but um, your work at running back in the past uh, as a coach and things like that, have you provided any insight at all? And again, I know you're busy at receiver position, but has you been able to do you, uh, provide any insight or anything with the running game, maybe help to improve that based on your experience? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Coach Lashley's awesome. You know, we sit in a room and uh, yes, you know, it's uh, we do exchange ideas we don't just like split up and hey Rob just worry about the past game we sit in a room at times and we go over the run game extensively all of us all of the coaches uh, so we're all on the same page coach Lashley does an amazing job of making sure that you know I'm learning a lot from him you know I've been a coordinator like I don't know 10 years or so and you know and I'm learning things from him that's going to help me out if possibly I ever get a chance again um just everybody being on the same page and just going over the details and especially in the run game, especially in the run game. And so uh, the way with the RPOs, 
go. You know, Chris, we, we, we have to – that has to be a part of the run game. It pieces together with who the safety run fits are, who's coming in the alley, what linebackers are fitting. Can we get guys behind him? How do the RPOs fit in the run scheme? So, yes, to answer your question, he does – uh, let me uh, express some of my opinions about, you know, what I believe in the run game. Coach, we've got time for a couple more. We're going to go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, Coach Likens. Hey, Manny. Uh, uh, so I wanted to ask you uh, about uh, the Zalem Worsham, just because he's a guy we really haven't seen. And I know you guys obviously were excited when you got him uh, recruiting-wise, but uh, how is he in his development? And, and when might is there any chance we might see him this year on the field? Or is it more like a redshirt year for him, you think? Uh, well, you never know, 2020, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so my, here, here's the thing about Daz is I am very, very excited about Daz, and I tell Daz that every day. I tell him, man, you're, you're going to be a really good player. Daz needs to get a little stronger in the weight room. Um, and there's – so what you got to do, the hard decisions you have to make as a coach is, you, you know, you can't get D. Wiggins, Pope, Harley – JP ready to play and Keyshawn and Mike Redding and X and Daz. I mean, you can't. So you have to take the one that you feel like maybe needs a little bit more time in the weight room. That doesn't mean he's not as a, as good a player as those other guys or whatever. But, you know, maybe he's just not quite as on his releases. He's got to get in the weight room. You know, he is coming off an injury that he had in high school. And he's just now he had a tremendous practice today and he's given great effort every day so we're very very excited about Daz I don't know for sure I can't tell you that whether we'll see him in the game if nobody gets hurt and things stay the way they are probably not but if you like I said you you just never know and I've talked to Daz about that and I'm I'm very excited and love that young man thanks coach last one for you we've got Susan Miller Degnan from the Miami Herald Susan go ahead for coach Likens hey coach Likens hey, Susan Hello. As far as uh, uh, North Carolina State, I know we haven't talked about them. I know it's next week. Um, and even if you guys haven't started preparing for them, I'm sure as coaches you've looked at their team. Um, I know that NC State has six interceptions this season. They're doing pretty well. Um, can you talk a little bit about their uh, defensive backs? And, and do you have to be extra vigilant about preparing for those guys next Friday? Yeah, you know what they do? Uh, they run a, a just a whole defense um, that is not – little things are similar, but their structure is different than everybody you'll face. They're a true 3-3 three, three stack. I know the defense – I mean, I don't know him personally, but I know of his work. I've gone against him before. Um, and, I, and, and that secondary, and they're going to play cover three, then they're going to play man, and they try to create some confusion – um, you know, with their blitz packages, with three down linemen, three stack backers coming from all over the place, rotating the secondary, rotating it to the field, rotating it to the boundary, bringing corner blitzes, all of that stuff. So, you know, they rely on on confusing the quarterback with some things. And, and their DBs play really, really hard and tough, and they're courageous, and they, you know, they're – they come up fast and hard on things, like like on, on passes. And so, yeah, I mean, you got to be um, – you, you got to be on your P's and Q's when you're going up against these guys. You can't, you know, you got to run at them and, and make sure you're not inside when you're supposed to be outside. You got to protect against, you know, interceptions and things like that with your routes uh, on your stems. So we have to be very careful because they, they are a good group. Thank you.